Yes, welcome into Sports Bet. Betty and Inside today, Paulie and Teddy, Tuesday, June 27th, big game breakdown. Cubs and Nationals again, and the Cardinals and the Rockies, deep dive. We were off so long, I didn't even know what health division we were doing. It's the We're in the middle of the AFC North. Oh, mercy, the Cleveland Browns today, 1-15 last year. We'll go over them coming up in a second. New Jersey update, and also we'll get to our NBA award show yesterday. We'll get to that and kick that around in a second. Bad beats, bad bets, bad for the books. Let's start with a bad beat. Vicious. Yankees on the run line. Six to one, bottom of the ninth. One out. All hell breaks loose. They have to bring Chapman in. He gives up a run as well. Yankees win six to five, Teddy. Yeah, it's like, hey, welcome back to Vegas. <laughs> you know, uh, I had the Yanks on the run line uh, last night, of course. Uh, and uh, you would think in the, in the ninth, with the bullpen edge they have, Things will work out. But Tim Anderson, of all guys, the leadoff hitter. This is his first home run of the month of June. Hits a three-run bomb. And then Abreu uh, with the run-scoring double against Chapman uh, after he had to come in. A tough beat uh, for Yankees run line betters. Although, if you laid the chalk with the Yanks, you had to sweat it, but you still cashed. Yeah, under 10 as well. I mean, that those late runs put it over, too. That, that's a vicious beat as well. Bad for the books. What new? Carrasco takes money. They're 12-3 and three in his starts. 15 cent move on the Indians up to $1.75. It was 9 to 2 Texas, but the Indians win score, score by scoring 15 runs. Yeah, I mean, what was it? Was it a bad beat? Was it bad for the books? Probably a little bit of both. You know, uh, when the score is 9 to 2, when Texas scored 7 in the first two, uh, and they got Hamels on the hill, uh, Adrian Beltre goes yard, Elvis Andrews goes yard, Joey Gallo uh, goes yard, all off Carrasco. You got to think that the range of the right side there, but. Uh, Hamels was not ready to return yet. You know, what he threw 92 pitches, only 48 of them in the strike zone. 12 of the 25 batters that he faced reached base, and seven of them scored. And, of course, three different Rangers relievers came in and gave up multiple runs. How about Jose Ramirez? Now has two hits in at least two hits, I should say, in 11 of his last 14 games. Pauly, that, sir, is a hot streak. D-backs Phillies, nine. Total bet down to eight in some places. Fell seven. Six, nothing. Diamondbacks in the second inning. It was getaway day, and Goldschmidt had the day off too. But uh, it stays under. The game died. Yeah, it sure did. Uh, six, nothing in the third inning <laughs> in that contest. Uh, but a uh, day game in uh, Phoenix. The air conditioner was cranking at Chase Field, and there were only two extra base hits for the entire game. None of them by the Phillies. How about BMOC, a big man on campus on Twitter? Giants lost 18 to 23 against the Rockies with one of the best records in baseball, yet the Giants were favored at home. Yeah, BMOC is a good friend of the show, uh, but this tweet, uh, I put it uh, in the show notes specifically because it's like the, the mentality of what the hell are the Giants doing as chalk against Colorado? Huh? Samarja had his night uh, last night in San Fran off the schneid. Uh, be wary of these lines that look so out of whack they stand out like a sore thumb. Sometimes the wise guys are seeing something that deserves to be bet on, not bet against. It was a funny night. I mean, uh, the play of the day lost one of them with the Nationals. How about Eddie Butler, who was second to last with the worst Sierra in baseball? A lot of Adam balls. He only struck out one guy, but the Cubs shut down the Nationals until the bullpen got involved in the ninth. And uh, the Dodgers had uh, problems against Nolasco. But this would have been one of the worst beats of the season, Teddy. 2 nothing Cubs in the top of the ninth. It almost went over 10. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, sweat and a half for Cubs betters, you know. And both bullpins got rocked in the ninth inning. You really, uh, from a lifestyle perspective, you like cashing tickets, no question. And if you had the under, you still cashed. But you really hate sweating games that you're supposed to be cashing. It's kicking back in the rocket chair. Oh, yeah, it's the ninth, 2 nothing. I'm cashing this under, no problem. Oh, no, it's Sweat City. It takes years off your life with uh, <laughs> tough wins like that one, even though it was not a bad beat. Yep, how about this from covers? We have top five, bottom five so far in Major League Baseball. Check your bankroll, top five teams to bet on. Look at the Diamondbacks. If you've been betting $100 on the Diamondbacks, you're up over 20 units Rockies plus almost uh, 1,900. Uh, Houston checking in at number three. Dodgers number four. Look at the Brewers, Teddy. They're only four games over 500, but you're up over 10 units betting on Milwaukee. No question. And, and, and when we talk about the, the, win, the teams that are making money, obviously it's the teams with the best record who are making money. But when you see a team like Milwaukee in the top five for the season, 
you know that it's not just about winning games. It's about winning games at the right price. When you see a team, for example, like the Dodgers, and I believe this was before uh, L.A.'s game uh, last night. Uh, so, But uh, when you see a team like the Dodgers and how hot they've been, and you say, you know, they're only up 14 units for this season. It tells you sometimes even with the elite teams, maybe the money that was there to be made has already been made. I'm not sure. And when you look at this list, that these are going to be the best teams to be betting on moving forward as you'll approach the back half of the campaign. Yeah, these are going into Monday night's games. Here's the bottom teams. You're down almost three grand on the Giants, the worst in baseball. If you bet $100 on the Giants, Phillies down $2,100. Uh, Cubs minus, that's why the books are, are still okay, even though the Dodgers keep winning in the Rockies and, and Diamondbacks. Cubs minus $1,600. You're down uh, 15 and a half units with the Indians. And there's the Mets as well. Same cast of characters, Teddy. It's Cubs and Indians money every day. Yeah, sure. And, and of course, when you talk about the two teams that went to the World Series last year, two teams, they haven't been awful. You know, the Cubs are playing 500-level baseball. The Indians are playing 500-level uh, baseball or slightly above. But the prices that you're being asked to lay with those teams have obviously been problematic for their backers. You know, but the worst, San Fran and Philadelphia, I don't see any hope for those two teams. And I would expect at the end of the season, you're going to see the Giants and the Phillies still in this bottom five, perhaps with many more units lost than what we're seeing already. All right, shame on the voters last night. The award show with the NBA from New York City. Uh, it's an arbitrary number. You're, so you're telling me 12, 10, and 10 is better than 31, 11, and 9. Westbrook had a triple-double, big deal. He wins the MVP. Draymond Green, Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, Eric Gordon, Sixth Man of the Year. And Brogdon was Rookie of the Year. What would you think? I thought they got everything wrong. Everything. I mean, really. You know, I mean, the Coach of the Year was the one that made me nuts. Spolster coming in second to Antoni. Sorry. Spolster was, with the job he did last year with the Miami Heat was second to none, period. And anyone that voted for D'Antoni over Spolster, it just blows my mind with that. Westbrook over Harden and Kawhi. I mean, again, you know, the, the betters apparently fell in love with stats. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Brogdon as Rookie of the Year. Uh, I thought the, the, uh, yeah, it had to go with one of the two players from the Sixers. They were both better than Malcolm Brogdon was last year, even though they didn't get as much playing time. And Draymond Green over either Kawhi or Rudy Gobert. Uh, in my mind, Draymond Green was three, was third on that list. But, of course, uh, he's the name player. He ended up winning the award, Defensive Player of the Year. I, I mean, was Kawhi worse than he was in the two year, previous years that he won the award? He was not. Voters just got bored voting for the same guy, and that's, in my mind, not the best way to do it. But of all of them, D'Antoni over Spolstra, that's the one that made me nuts, Polly. But, frankly, I didn't think they got a whole lot right. Yeah, I, I can. It, it's hard to give coach of the year to a guy who started 11-30, and 30, although he did a good job, but I, I could see that. When you have a team that's to win 11-30 and 30 and is in the playoff race on the last game of the season and every, and every player on that team, every key player on that team got hurt, you say, what an incredible coaching job. Not, oh, you got off to a bad start. Uh, you're an idiot. No. Hey, Dan Tony took over a terrible situation, too. They were the eighth seed. They well performed their win total, and they were the three. And I thought he coached the MVP with Harden. He built that whole team around Harden. I thought Dan Tony did a great job. I'm not saying he didn't do a great job. I'm just saying Spolstra's coach of the year. That's my opinion. I'm allowed to have one. Uh, what do you have? Hurry up and wait in New Jersey. What's the update there? Oh, goodness. You know, and, and it, we're really seeing the same thing. I shouldn't say the same thing. It doesn't look like we're going to see a resolution on the New Jersey sports betting case anytime soon. So this is what happened, okay? It did not make the U.S. Supreme Court docket on Monday. It was neither granted nor denied, which means what do we do? We wait. <laughs> we have no idea what's going to happen. There's a chance we could get a, uh, that it could something could happen on Tuesday. There's a chance that nothing will happen forever. Uh, Daniel Wallach, uh, one of my favorite follows on Twitter, a guy who uh, follows the sports betting law as well as anyone in the country, uh, his quote, this is the groundhog day of sports betting, uh, not likely to get a resolution again anytime soon, although there's a chance we'll hear something over the course of the next 24 hours. All right, up next, big game breakdown, Cubs and Nationals and the Astros, excuse me, the Cardinals and the Rockies. And we'll get to the Cleveland Browns in the deep dive on Sports Bit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. Go to SBRodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sportsbooks.
Back on Sports Bit, betting insight today. Big game breakdown in a second. Follow us on Twitter at Paulie Howard at Teddy underscore covers. What's the update with the SBR conference in early August, Teddy? Oh, it's cool. It's free. First of all, it's free. Second of all, it's in San Jose, Costa Rica, which is going to give you a good excuse to go down there. I'm going to be down there. A number of big names. We'll have more details tomorrow, but no, it's free. It's Costa Rica, and it's in August. So, uh, good chance to uh, meet some of the guys that you watch on video every day, including myself. But again, uh, be prepared. We'll have more details uh, in the course of the next uh, show or two over the next day or two. Uh, there'll be a landing page that we'll send you to that'll get you all the details on this free conference uh, sponsored by uh, the fine folks at sbrpicks.com. All right, here we go. Cubs and Nationals. Arietta against Scherzer. Nats $1.70, seven and a half the total. Nats bullpen awful again last night. After Gio left down one nothing, they gave up some more runs and uh, gave up four after he split. Now, I think Scherzer brings a, a chip on his uh, shoulder into this game. Remember, he had a no-hitter going to the bottom of the eighth last time out. Lost the no-no, lost the shutout, lost the game as the Marlins scored a run in the eighth without getting the ball out of the infield. The good. Last two starts, 16 innings pitched. One run, six hits, 21 strikeouts. But the bad, Teddy, 118 pitches against the Mets, 121 pitches against the Marlins. Dusty doesn't want to go to that bad bullpen. Yeah, and again, Dusty, a guy with a long history of overworking his starters, just pitched Scherzer for 118 pitches and 121 pitches his last two games. For me, that's a giant red flag. I understand that the Nats bullpen is a disaster. And I understand Dusty's quote. You know, quote, he was throwing 95-96. He looked strong. He gave up the cheap hit. It was his game. Who would you bring in when he was throwing? Uh, who would you bring in who was throwing better than him? I understand that conceptually. However, given the state of the Nationals pen and the state of the fact that Scherzer is a guy who's thrown a ton of pitches his last two starts, no way I can lay a price with Washington. I can't do it. The pitch counts matter, and you have a pitcher who, you know, you say, all right, he got a chip on his shoulder. doesn't matter if he can't bring his A stuff. Well, that means that at some point you're betting on Arietta, though. The decline has been steady. You look at this graphic. ERA, 2015, a 177. You see the FIP up to a 310 and then a 352. This, uh, this year, a 436 and a 4.09 FIP as well. Big problem keeping the ball down, and when he misses up, he gets tagged, Teddy. Yeah, I mean – Again, when you look at Jake Arrieta, you know, Scherzer's issue, too many pitches over the last couple of games. That makes him, in my mind, unbackable in this price range tonight. When you have Arietta, the issue is too many innings over the course of a couple of seasons. Remember, pre-2015, his career high was 156 innings. Then, last two years, he threw 229 plus another 19 in the playoffs and 197.1 with another 22 in the playoffs. So you see those declining numbers. This is a guy who's been overworked. And you talked about that ground ball per percentage and the home run to fly ball ratio. Look at the numbers this year. The ground ball's way down, and the home run uh, to fly ball percentage is way up. And this is a guy, Jake Arrieta, remember, when he was d- shutting everybody down, he was a threat to throw a complete game every time out. Well, he went 12 straight starts without pitching in the seventh inning. And then in his last outing, he went into the seventh uh, with an 11-1, to uh, you know, had a big lead against Miami. He had good command, only needed 92 pitches to last in to the seventh. That's certainly a positive sign potentially moving forward if you like the Cubs at an underdog price tonight. Musical Chairs continues with the leadoff spot. Last night it was Contreras, went two for four and hit the home run to start the game. We'll see what Madden does in this one as it worked out on Monday. Game number two, live odds, SBR odds, and Sportsbook Review rating guide. Make sure you're betting with a trustworthy shop out there, the Cardinals and the Diamondbacks. I think I said Rockies earlier, my fault. Uh, Martinez, uh, Martinez against Walker. St. Louis, $1.15 on the road, eight and a half the total. How many bets could you win if you went around and asked who has the third best record in baseball? It's the Diamondbacks. If you have bet, again, if you bet $100, as we mentioned earlier, on the Diamondbacks every game for the whole season, you're up over two grand. Monday show, we talked about the Yankees lost three times last week as favorites of over 250, 240 or more. Arizona hasn't been 240 in a game all season. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing about the MLB marketplace. And that's why teams like Arizona offer the ability 
to return more than 20 units before uh, the 1st uh, of July. But there's no fluke in what Arizona is doing right now. Look at the run differential. You have this elite Dodgers team. You have the elite Astro team. And there's Arizona right behind them. And, of course, you know, Walker's the key guy, uh, one of the key guys uh, for Arizona if they want to maintain this pace and stay in this playoff chase uh, into September. Because, you know, it's a guy who's always had the promise the career numbers aren't there. 28 and 25, a 4.07, looks very average. But he's already got more than 400 major league innings under his belt. He's only 24 years old, and he's been pretty darn good of late. This year, 6-3 and three with a 3.43 ERA, a 3.45 FIP, and he's allowed three runs or less in nine of his last ten starts. The only one he didn't, he allowed four, and that was a game he was coasting. It was a 13-5 to five win over the Dodgers. He was supposed to be challenging hitters. And he did. Taewon Walker's been very, very good in recent weeks. An undervalued commodity in the MLB betting marketplace. And Martinez on the verge of being something special. Last three seasons, 36 and 22 with a 299. Only six pitchers have worked at least 450 innings across that span with an ERA of less than three. And here's the upside. 8.9 strikeouts per nine and 54.6 ground ball percentage. The magic combination of strikeouts and ground balls now in 2017, up to a career-high 10 strikeouts per nine. And with that heavy heat, look at the highest average fastball with starters this year. Severino clocking in number one at 97.2. Martinez and Cole right behind him there. But only six and six this year, Teddy. They can't score for him. Yeah, I mean, the Cardinals have scored two runs or less eight times behind already. He's often going against aces. And, of course, that includes a couple of shutouts. Can't win a game if you don't score any runs. And make no mistake about it. Look at this price tag. You know, the betting markets are not sleeping on Carlos Martinez. They love his advanced metric stats. They love his velocity. And if you're betting him in every start this season, you've been losing money. <laughs> that may be the case again tonight. We'll talk about this game when it comes to play of the daytime. P.U., what stinks? The Cleveland Browns, they're up next with our AFC North preview and the play of the day on Sportsbet. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. Research before you bet. Be sure to check out SPR Picks for the best game predictions, breakdowns, and much, much more. Back on Sports Pit, betting inside today, we continue the AFC North. Today, the Cleveland Browns win total four and a half, under minus 130. Last year, one and 15 straight up, three 12 and one ATS, eight and eight over under. Mainstream stats, 13 takeaways, only the Bears had fewer, 25 giveaways, minus 12 turnover margin. There's, I mean, there's not a lot, there's nothing to like here, Teddy. The offense, everything was terrible. They're lucky they won a game. Yeah, no question. But it's it's the NFL. Teams find a way to win a game or two or three or four, despite being awful in many different categories. For Cleveland last year, being awful. I mean, the well, they were awful in everything. But there was some stuff to like offensively. Interestingly enough, okay, the 5.1 yards per play, that's well below we league average. The 6.5 yards per pass, that's the bottom quartile. The 66 sacks allowed, the worst in the NFL by far. Uh, the second worst team, L.A., had 49 sacks allowed, which just shows how bad Cleveland was. But the one thing that stood out, one thing they did okay last year, 4.9 yards per rush. That was number two in the NFL. Only Buffalo was better. They were ahead of the Dallas Cowboys in yards per rush. Their bigger problem, in my mind, last year was the defense that, as you mentioned, only forced the 13 takeaway. 101.8 quarterback rating allowed, second worst in the NFL behind the Lions, 26 sacks, 30th. Only the Lions and Raiders had fewer, and 4.6 yards per rush allowed, fourth worst. I think they had a good draft. Garrett, number one. Peppers also in the first round. And Joku, the tight end out of Miami, first round. Kaiser, the quarterback out of Notre Dame, in the second round. I don't know what they're going to do at quarterback, but maybe, just maybe, Osweiler can have a decent season. There's no pressure on the guy now. He flamed out in Houston. I mean, no one expects him to do anything with the Browns. I'm with you 100%. Look, look at the picture. I mean, Hugh Jackson last year, he was down on his knees begging for a quarterback over and over. You remember the injuries they had at quarterback. You remember the disaster the offensive line was. And, of course, the lack of skill position talent was disastrous. This year, I'm telling you, their quarterback situation is better. Okay, maybe Deshaun Kaiser is the QB of the future. Maybe he isn't. You know, he brings them marginally closer to an answer at least. But I'm with you on Osweiler having nothing but upside with 
Cleveland. Number one, Hugh Jackson's a bright offensive mind. Number two, the markets aren't expecting anything out of Brock Osweiler. So if he's decent, all of a sudden there's a whole lot of value uh, on Cleveland. Now, uh, uh, to say that this team is going to turn the corner at the QB position or find the answer for the future or uh, be better than average at QB, I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is that the Browns are likely to have a better QB situation this year than last and could get decent QB play. And that might go a long way towards bringing them back to respectability. They upgraded the offensive line. They did a good job there. Greg Williams, the new defensive coordinator. Well, I mean, what is it? 3-4, 4-3, three, 3-4. Four, four, three, three, four. What are they doing now on defense? Yeah, they, well, they're switching back to a 3-4 as they've done. But i got to talk about the offensive line because an, an upgrade is not a strong enough statement. This offensive line was a freaking disaster last year. So they signed Kevin Zietler. They signed him away from their rival in Cincinnati. He's one of the best guards in football. You know, uh, they got the uh, future Hall of Famer, a left tackle, and Joe Thomas. They locked up the one good interior lineman they have, uh, Joel Petonio, uh, to an extension. And they signed J.C. Treader from Green Bay. This has the makings of a decent to above average offensive line. I think there's real hope in that regard for the Cleveland Browns. When it comes to the other end of the equation <laughs> on the defensive side, I'm not a big fan of Greg Williams, and I haven't been. But they have a lot of building blocks. You know, you look at Jamie Collins and Danny Shelton and Joe Hayden, all guys who should be fitting into the latest defensive change. And as you mentioned, they've been switching from 3-4 to 4-3 and back again. In my mind, that's a bigger issue in the media than it is on the field. They're playing hybrid styles right now, and I expect to see a lot of that. Uh, but, of course, Williams as a defense coordinator has been largely discredited over the course of his failed defenses in many different stops in recent years. I don't know how well he's going to fit in Cleveland this season. What do you have on the schedule? And the NFL said, beat it, get out of here. They don't have one national TV game. No, they sure didn't. I mean, last year's schedule was brutal. It was top five in the NFL for toughness. This year, it's still the toughest schedule in the division, obviously, because they don't get to play themselves. But it's notably easier than it was last year. They do lose a home game to play the Vikings in London. That's never a good thing. Now, if you remember, <laughs> uh, this is not a team. Uh, and as you mentioned, they, they don't play anything. Uh, in terms of night, what do they have? I think they have one 4 o'clock game in L.A. They don't even get any late afternoon games. It's all 1 o'clock starts uh, for the Browns, with the exception of that one game in London, which is uh, going to be an early <laughs> what 9.30 a.m. kickoff in Cleveland. Well, I talked to a lot of uh, professional bettors who kind of like this over, but I, I can't get there. You're talking about a big jump from one win to five. What do you think? I think they're very live. I could only bet Cleveland over. And if you remember, the very first win total, when the lines first came out, we talked about it on the show, and we used it as a play of the day, and my line was, this, line's not, this, this number's not going to be there tomorrow. That was Cleveland over four. And I knew that number wouldn't last, and it didn't. I would still bet them over four and a half right now before I bet them under four and a half. But, of course, we can't use that as a play of the day now because we already used over four for a play of the day, which was a much better bet, which leaves us with something else. All right. Money time. I blew it Monday. You, 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 it's your turn now. We're going back to Arizona and St. Louis. Take it away. Yeah, of course. Let's take a look at the D-backs. Game number 908, Arizona plus 105. They've been undervalued commodity all year. That hasn't changed. Paul Goldschmidt. And the D-backs just keeping it low-key, and that suits us just fine at this price point. Take Arizona, the game at number 908, plus 105. If you shop around, you might be able to find a little bit better. That's our play of the day. All right, up next, we uh, up, up tomorrow, rather, we finish out the AFC North. Probably the second-best team and the team that can challenge the Patriots in the AFC. The Steelers, 10.5 win total. We'll tack them coming up, and of course, more baseball as well on Sportsbit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. We're back. Tell your friends. <laughs> <laughs>